welcome everyone to our latest webinar, Why are progressive values dominating bioethics in Western democracies? Today we are joined by Professor Margot Somerville, Professor David Jones and Dr. Pierre Matthews. Our sponsor for this event is the University of Notre Dame, Australia. Our panellists will speak to the topics for a few minutes each and then we will move on to a wide ranging discussion. We have a mixed audience, as I understand it tonight. So for anyone not familiar with bioethics, the word bioethics comes from bio, uh, from the Greek bios, meaning life, and ethics, an understanding between right and wrong, which is the shortest definition of ethics I've ever heard, but it, it is one. Bioethics is about not doing the wrong thing and trying to do the right thing with respect to how we treat life, in particular human life, in practice and not just in theory. Many bioethics issues involve the two great events in each and every human life, birth and death. But they also include, for example, our treatment of animals and our planet's environment. Uh, I, I was um, uh, once I, I once had a, a discussion with a, a prominent American bioethicist called Ezekiel Emanuel. He was the, the um, advisor to President Obama. He's very prominent uh, in in sort of uh, Democrat leaning bioethics in the United States. And I asked him what he thought about conservative bioethics, and he replied, "There are no conservative bioethicists except Catholics, and they are divided." Uh, he said that not knowing that I was a Catholic. Um, uh, as a purely empirical matter in this, he was completely mistaken. There are, in fact, a great variety of voices in bioethics coming from different perspectives, some more or less conservative. Uh, what was concerning to me at the time, but I think characteristic of contemporary culture, is the way that the views of others are dismissed out of hand in a particular, I mean, this was an off the cuff remark. So I mean, I don't want to, to uh, um, be uh, overly critical of, of uh, Zeke in this way. This is, I think, characteristic of something which is on our culture, uh, a, a, a tendency to be dismissive about uh, views which we disagree with, uh, a tendency to live within echo chambers, uh, to have discussions, serious discussions only with people that we already agree with, uh, at least to, to a great degree. So my initial reaction to this question was, well, are progressive values dominating bioethics? Now, when I was preparing for a lecture in bioethics, I looked online to see what's on the horizon uh, for bioethics. And what I found were just general issues, things like egg freezing, genome, uh, genome editing, surrogacy enhancement, AI, assisted dying and aging. There's no discussion of values here. It's like technology is racing ahead of ethics. And it seems to me that bioethics here is very much a question of a practical ethics, kind of judged on practicalities. What are the practicalities of freezing eggs? And what about mums in the playground who'll be as old as grandparents? So there's two big areas of issues. There's one which is what I would call an ordinary everyday ethical issue. That is something that we've had around ever since humans were on the planet. What is right and wrong to do in regard to dying people? And then there's the avant-garde ethical issues, which are those raised by this extraordinary new science and what is right and wrong to do with using that science. A dialogue, true dialogue, I think is a neglected art. Um, and this I think is a, is a real problem. Uh, I believe it's a problem as much on the right as on the left. It's a typical problem that the, the, le the right identify as being a, a, a left-wing problem, cancel culture and so on. But if you, if you say something which is out of step with the, with the view on the right, you'll soon find yourself cancelled in a very similar way. One sort of question I have is, can progressive values dominate bioethics if no one is actually addressing foundational questions um, maybe that's because either we're afraid we won't agree, or maybe it's more likely that we're confused because all of these values are conflicting. It was a tension also between the harms directly caused by the disease and the harms caused by the treatment of the disease. This is something that doctors are always familiar with, but it's also true in public health that sometimes 
the treatment is worse than the disease. And at a certain point, you've got to say, when is it time to, to, stop, the, to stop the treatment? It's because they're a matter of human solidarity and the good of all. So I would say that there are some values, these kind of human values, like dignity, humanity, enabling people to belong, to participate and to contribute, sort of being in this together, these values never disappear. And that's something that Margot has said, these values sort of underlie everything. Um, also, in the practicalities, these human values do have great influence. So if I'm looking at the question, are progressive values dominating bioethics in Western democracies? Well, I'm not so sure. If you, if you are the relative of someone and you're concerned about what a doctor's doing, always ask, always ask, why are you doing this? To try to tease out what's, what is actually the motivation behind it, what's good and what's bad about it. Because there is, there is ambiguity and sometimes a way to, to unpack that ambiguity is to ask questions. But I don't think that stops by changing the law. It actually expands to a different set of practices. But what I talk about is, is progressive values not progressive people and what we have now and i think this is why elections are so political elections are so very difficult to call because you've got people voting who've got what i call mixed values packages on some issues they're conservative on other ones they're very liberal which is the word that you've used for progressive values uh, if you if you think that um uh the, the the law will resolve the the ambiguity so we're just making it all all um, everything's now out in the open and we don't have the problem that we had before but then I think that's not a good reason for, for doing it so suicide w was a crime and then it was um, decriminalized because of the recognition that criminalizing and prosecuting people didn't do any good. But as a result of that, there is a problem about people thinking that they can then do it. So there is a weakening there of, of what is happening when you decriminalise something, even if it is to protect other people. Uh, there was a woman in the gospel with a flow of blood and she had suffered much under many doctors uh, over many years and spent all that she had, but she grew not better, but rather worse. Uh, it's, it's not a new thing for doctors to, to, to cause more suffering than they alleviate. The pro-euthanasia case is promoted through saying we need this because people are in terrible pain. In fact, if you look at the reasons that people have for requesting euthanasia, pain is not one of the major reasons. It's usually somewhere between around 9th and 13th on the list of reasons. But I think that the, the problem of overtreatment and dysthanasia is the same for me as, the, as the, the concern that I have with euthanasia. It's both about control and thinking that you can still, the doctor not willing to, to let go of control and the patient not being able to let go of control in a certain way. And the control becomes something which is, which is counterproductive, which either causes excess suffering or, or ends, deliberately ends the person's life. But it, it's more a question of, uh, as David said, doctors understanding that death isn't a failure, a failure of medicine. And that's coming about because we've got really good palliative care and really good doctors working in palliative care. We should just hear more good stories about how you can die well and that not having certain treatment is not trying to do suicide or euthanasia or anything else like that. So that distinction between euthanasia and recognising the limits of life is clearer. That situation, we sometimes describe it as prolonging dying rather than prolonging living. And there's no obligation to prolong dying. 